everyone. This is Sandy and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my third video that I'm making and hopefully each and every one gets to be a little bit better and a little bit more polished. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this card when I posted it on Instagram and on Facebook. I couldn't believe how many people liked it. I really didn't expect that and many of you were saying how did you do that because you can see that it has a gloss to it it has a sheen to it and I did that with gilding polish and then a lot of people said well what is that and how do you use it and actually I am not an expert at it and I should admit this is the first time that I tried it over doing some watercoloring and it worked so I'm super happy about that and I will show you how I did it and hopefully you will get the same results. Now today I decided to do something a little different because I just didn't want to recreate the exact same card. So instead of using the 3D embossing folder that I used there, I'm going to use this one which is the book cover engravings. It's also a floral pattern and I just decided I wanted to do something different. Now, if you don't know much yet about using 3D embossing folders, you can go onto my YouTube channel and down toward the bottom, there is an uncut, unedited version of the workshop that I did that's like two hours long and I go through a lot of different techniques that you can use with 3D embossing folders. Also, in number one video that I made, it's having some focus issues because my camera wasn't working well, but I do review exactly all of the things that you need to consider and it's very easy but there's things that you need to know before you start using these. So if you'd like a refresher or you have never used these before I would suggest maybe you watch those and just get yourself up to speed on it. But today I'm going to be using this folder and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ink the folder. So I'm going to turn it this way and as we have discussed in some of these other videos there is an emboss side and a deboss side and I'm not going to go into details with that today you can watch the other videos but what I will say is the emboss side of the folder the background is raised up and the flowers or whatever the pattern is are what should I say they go down into the plastic on this side the background this is the deboss side the background is on the lower and the flowers are raised up so when you're inking a folder you make a decision as to which side you want to ink and you base that on whether you want the background inked on the final card or you want the florals inked. Now you need to know that if you ink these florals on the raised side, after it all gets pressed through the machine, the ink side will be lowered into the pattern on the card. So if you want the background and the pattern all raised up and the background colored, which is what we most of the time do, you want to ink this embossed side. Now hopefully that's not as clear as mud, but you will understand as we move along. So I want the back colored. Let's look at my card again. Can you see how this is all colored here? This is all inked, the background around the raised flower. So what I did was I inked this side. And on the Altenew folders, all of them other than the first couple have the names printed on the outside. And that side where the names are printed is the emboss side. So you don't have to worry about figuring it out too much. Now I'm going to put a piece of paper under here and then I'm going to go ahead and ink this side of the folder. And for that I'm going to use the Altenew Mixed Media Ink in Frayed Leaf. And it's funny because when I did my workshop, which was July 25th, I told everybody that pigment inks work better at this than dye inks. Although you can certainly use dye inks, but it seems like pigment inks are a little bit thicker and they work better. And in the Altenew line, the mixed media ink is perfect for this. 
But up until recently, they had only released a very few colors, some greens and some pinks. And so that's what I said in my workshop. Well, now, just this last week, they have released, in the August release, a lot of brand new colors in these mixed media inks. So they're perfect for this, and I don't have them yet. I ordered some, but they haven't come. So I'm using my frayed leaf, which is my tried and true for this. And all you do is just wipe it across your folder. You don't have to press. You just wipe it, and you make sure that you get an even coverage like this. Can you see the green going on there on the white paper behind it? And can you see how the flowers are staying white, staying clear? Okay, now I'm going to look in here and see if I see anything that's gotten where I don't want it to be. There's some green on the leaves, but I'm not really caring about that. But I do think I'm going to wipe off some of these flowers in here and make sure that the green ink is not where I don't want it to be. And it, it wipes off very easy. And if you get a little bit in there, it's not going to make any difference. So I'm going to run this uh, off camera so that it doesn't become too noisy for you. And I'll be right back. Okay, let's see how this turned out. Now you might notice that I have a metal shim in here, and that's because when I first ran it through, the color didn't come through the way I wanted it to, so I just kept the piece of paper right here where it went. I re-inked. I decided to put the metal shim in to give it a little bit more pressure, and this time it came out fine. Okay, so what I'm using for this project are Altenew watercolor, or they're called woodless watercolor pencils. And when you get them, they come in, I think there's 24 colors in here. And I've already taken out the colors I wanted to do for this project. And I have them right here. I will post the names on the video. Okay, so when I did this other card, I did not do extensive watercoloring. And by that, what I mean is I am not a watercolorist. Uh, that is not my expertise. And so everything I do is very simple and not at all complicated. So I didn't do anything really complicated on these cards either. So I'm just going to let you know that. But the watercolor pencils <laughs> make it so much easier. So I'm going to start up here and just start coloring. Just start coloring, not making any big deal out of it. Just like using colored pencils. And one thing that's easier about doing it on this pattern and this design is that it's raised for you. So uh, you don't have to worry about borders or, you know, everything around it. You could actually watercolor around it if you wanted to instead of inking the back. I'm just putting a base coat in these leaves of some of the green. This is the um, lighter of the green, the grass field. And you can see a little bit of the ink got on here, but I didn't really care because it was green and it'll just make it more textured. So there is no big secret formula to this or making it look, you know, like super 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 duper wonderful artistic i mean if anybody can do this it's me um what am i trying to say not if anybody can do this it's me if i can do it anybody can do it hello that that makes more sense doesn't it oh my goodness okay so i'm just doing these leaves all in green i'm just putting down a base layer of it and actually this on the edge isn't even going to be in the card because the, the, this is six by six, but I'm doing it anyway just to kind of finish the, the whole floral image. And you don't have to worry about these pencils if they get not real even or anything because you're going to even it out with the water brush. So, okay, what I had decided ahead of time and as I'm making all of these leaves, the greens and then I'm going to do gold like I did on the others a couple of them on the other card when I said if if I can do it anybody can do it it reminds me my husband and I 
since we've retired. You know, I have to keep busy doing something. So he's making stained glass and I'm working on cards. And then in the evening, we subscribe to this thing that used to be called, this service that used to be called the, the Great Courses, which is like, oh, college courses that have lectures and things, but they're not meant to be academic in that sense. They're just very informative and we watched one, for instance, on the history of cathedrals, and it was really cool. And so anyway, after that, we said, oh, let's just subscribe to this other one that's called Curiosity Stream. So we we recently got that. And there's a <laughs> there is a um, a show on there. OK, now I'm taking the darker green, which is Shadow Creek. And you can tell this is not scientific at all. I'm just putting some down where the where the uh, central vein of the leaves would be and just kind of making it darker around these edges. It's like I said, not rocket science. So I'm just making little texture here, more green. So anyway, we um, one of these shows that we like has these two young guys who have known each other since they were like 10. And now they're in their 20s and they go to the uh, national parks and they just do adventurous things. And this last last night we were watching the one that where they're in Denali, which is here in Alaska, the highest mountain uh, in the north in North America. And they were doing some mountain climbing on it and whatever. But anyway, at the end of this program. You know, you see them go through all these trials of trying to do things that they've never done before. And, um, of course, they're young guys in their 20s, right? So they're not me, retired lady, turning 70. All right. But that having been said, they always say at the end, and remember, if we can do it, you can do it. And it makes me feel like I can go out there and climb that Denali Mountain. No problem. It's just so funny how saying that makes you just get motivated, you know. So that's what I'm saying to you. If I can do this, you can do it. Um, because this is this is not me being Aram where she's doing these fabulous watercolors, you know. This is just me being an ordinary person trying to learn techniques that I've never done before in my life. So... Anyway, I just decided I was going to put gold, sort of a goldy yellow on this. And the reason I did that is because the main flowers I'm going to make in the purple color family. And on the color wheel, the complementary color for purple, does anybody know what it is? It's yellow. So I decided that for my color scheme on here, I was going to add some yellow to make those purple color flowers pop out. And speaking of which, my, my workshop for Altenew that's going to be at the end of September, no date set yet, but soon it will be, um, I got asked by a bunch of people in one of my workshops to do some um, a workshop on color theory. So that's what I'm doing at the end of September. So if you feel like you'd like to brush up on color theory and the colors that you choose for your cards, um, then just bookmark me or whatever and um, and keep keep an eye out because I'm going to be giving the date pretty soon. Okay, I'm using the lemon yellow in the middle of the flowers. I'm just like coloring, trying to fill the void in time by talking. Okay, now I'm going to start with the rubellite, which is kind of a kind of a violet color here. I don't think the ink looks as violet as this does. I'm just coloring the basic flower. And then I'm going to put some of the darker color, kind of blend them at the
base of the petals where you'd normally find it darker. But again, you do not have to be, you know, perfection in coloring this. There's a little bit of green on here from the ink, but I'm not worrying about it. I'm just kind of coloring over it. And I'm just doing this. Now here around the edges of the flowers, and it's so easy to see where they are on the raised edges, I'm just doing a little bit more color around there to give it at that definition so it doesn't all blend together. Give it a little bit more in these little veins here, little folds in the flowers, in the petals. And we're almost done here. Getting close. I'm so glad you're all joining me and watching my video here. It just blesses me and you know I'm I'm all about teaching. I've been a teacher for literally 50 years. I got my teaching credential for elementary school back when I was 20 and young and naive and didn't know what the heck I was doing. And I have taught a little bit of everything ever since and ended up being a college professor and then being a dean and uh, I knew I wanted to be a teacher since I was five years old. I remember exactly when I decided that I wanted to teach. And I love to teach. So this has just been such a wonderful opportunity that people would want to come and come to workshops and just have an opportunity to share something that I've come to love so much with the card making. So. I really thank you so much for participating with me. It's such a blessing to me. And I really, really love that. So hopefully I can just start doing more and more. Okay, I'm making this a little darker here because there's a, some of that green there and I want to make sure I don't have a green flower. And I think what I'm going to do is make... I'm going around here being making that definition. I know this makes for a longer video, but I know that there's people out there that don't like it when you skip either because for beginners you kind of need to see every step. So those of you that are really experienced and even more experienced than me can just skip forward in the video and skip all this part. But for people who are beginners, they need to have all of this detail there. So I think I'm going to do the other flower, the pur other purple, and just kind of make them separate colors instead of one of the same. I'm going to put this a little bit darker in there. As soon as we get done with this flower, we're done with the coloring. Once again, when you go to do the water on it, you don't have to have perfection. You just want to have that that illusion of colored flower petals. We're not looking to be, you know, framing our watercolor. We're just looking to bless somebody with a card that they're going to know you made by hand. And they're going to know what you put into it. And it's going to look beautiful. Okay, we're almost done here. I'm just going to put some more in here. Just a little bit more here. Okay, so there you go. It's pretty well already colored. And we may add some more, but what I'm going to do now is just start with some water. I could use a water brush, but I just have some paint brushes out here. And I'm just adding water to it. Just a little. That's why I'm using regular cardstock. It does not have to be watercolor cardstock because you're barely using any any water. Don't get it too wet. You notice that I have a paper towel here. And I can kind of like just 
damp it off so that I don't get too much water on the cardstock. So I'm just starting on the leaves and look at how, how pretty that looks already. It's just so easy. So easy to make it look like, oh my gosh, look what I did. The only art class I've ever taken in my whole life was in college when I was working on my teaching credential and I taught and I took teaching art in elementary school and that was a long time ago so um what can I say I am I am not an artist but I have learned a lot and so much I learned a lot when I was in the um Altenew uh, AECP, the Altenew Educator Certification Program. And then I've just learned a lot from doing what you're doing, which is watching YouTube videos. So I'm doing all these leaves first, and as you can see, all I'm doing is putting a little water over it. I'm not doing some kind of massive watercolor technique here. When I get all done, I'll decide if I want to add some more color or something, but right now I'm just smoothing it all out. And these woodless watercolor pencils just blend so nice. And for this, with the gilding polish on the top, you don't really need um, a lot of color. You know, like a lot of definition in your color. Now I'm just going to take this and put a little water on it and and add a little bit of green to this one because it's a little pale. And add a little bit more in here. So you can also just take a wet brush and just kind of run it on the on the pencil after you've done everything and add a little bit more color and that's all I'm doing and I'm done with the green I'm not messing with it anymore I'm going to rinse off my brush over here get it good and rinsed off and then get some more clear water and I'm going to start on the yellow on this gold and I'm just going to do the same thing just just even out The watercolor pencils you gotta admit this is pretty darn easy if I were trying to do this with actual watercolor um, I don't have a lot of guarantees for how it would turn out because I think a lot of it is my perfectionism I keep adding and keep adding and I'm never happy and then it just starts looking muddled and I don't know I'm working on my watercoloring. I'm not going to be doing a watercolor workshop for a really long time. So, but that's my area that I need to have some growth in, so that's okay. All right, so I did that yellow. I'm going to do the middle of the flowers now since it's also yellow. A little bit different yellow. All right, now I'm just going to rinse my brush off. Get some more clear water and start on the flowers and see how this turns out. This one is the lavender fields. Now if you really are a watercolorist, more power to you. And of course, you could put in all the details you want on here. But I'm gearing this toward those of us who, you know, just want to make pretty cards and aren't necessarily the most skilled at all of these things and just want to do something that looks pretty and that they can feel like they did something, accomplished something. So this we're just doing very basic. Can you see how those colors just come to life when you add a little bit of water to them? And really, literally, hardly any water. 
hardly any water is going into this. Almost all done. I'm just covering up any white that's left around there. And there you go. I'm going to just check the edges. You know when you are watercoloring and when you're doing alcohol markers it's kind of good to leave a lighter edge on it, but I don't really want it to be white. I just want it to be a lighter pink. Okay, and there we're done coloring. Yay! But this is how I decided to try that gilding polish. I got to this part on my card and it actually looked, you know, we're going to cut it down. It actually looked really pretty, but for some reason I just thought, I wonder what that would look like with some sheen. It would look so much more finished and that's what I did and then it worked. So what a surprise, huh? So while that's still drying, we're going to make our, do our sentiment and super easy. I just did it as you can see on the card. If I pull up my original card, I just did a vellum, a vellum um, piece across here. So I have one already pre-cut that I'm going to put in my misty. Let me move my misty up here. And I need to use my anti-static powder tool here because I'm going to gold heat emboss the, the sentiment. And for my sentiment, this time, instead of what I used last time, I'm going to use one from Storybook Sentiments. And I'm using the Happy Birthday. And I'm just going to put it right in here. Try to get it straight. Let me use this again. I should have done that after I did my stamp. And I'm going to take my conditioning eraser here from Altenew. Actually, any eraser will work. I think any white eraser. I was using that before this, but this does have a conditioner in it for your stamps. I've used the sentiment several times, but I just cleaned it and I, I thought, well, I better condition it again. So then I'm going to use my, oh, my computer decided it wants to be updated. That's nice when you're recording, isn't it? Okay. So I'm going to use my embossing ink here. I know they sell these tools these days, but my husband was nice enough to make me one to help with my stamping. It's just a piece of dowel, a big dowel, and painted with some felt on the bottom. It works terrific. Okay, and I'm just going to take that. And get my tweezers over here and get my gold embossing powder that looks good put up my powder And then we're going to heat set the, the sentiment. Now that this is done, I'm going to take a um, well-used Swiffer cloth here and wipe this off. Just a regular Swiffer dusting cloth to get off that powder that I put on there. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of the double adhesive sheets from Alta New, or you can use you can use any double adhesive sheet, or you can use the right width of double stick tape. Your choice. These sheets are just really nice to cut down and use. And we're going to put this right on this vellum sentiment. It's dry. And let's see what happens. I've got my gilding polish. This is metallic gilding polish. It's pearl luster in its color. I just got it from Amazon. I've got three or four different colors. Um, I'll put the link in the, in the description. And you do not need much of this. You do not need much because a little goes a long way. So you can just dip, there's a sponge that comes with it. Oops, I'm not on camera. There's a sponge that comes with it, and the first time you use it, you dampen it and kind of get the sponge washed out because it might have chemicals in it from the processing or whatever. You can just dip your sponge in there, but I'm going to put a little bit of this out on... Actually, this is a piece of freezer paper. Guess what? I learned a long time ago... And yes, I do have tef Teflon craft sheets, but I can throw this away and I'd have to clean a Teflon craft sheet. So I learned a long time ago that freezer paper is such a great option for doing anything messy and then you just throw it away and it's cheap. Okay, so I'm going to start up here and just start wiping this on just with this sponge. I'm not going to do anything fancy. The thing is, you do not want it really thick on here. You just want it a thin coating. So you just get some on there and just do a thin coating over the top. And like I said, this is kind of a pearlized white. I don't know if you can even see that anything's happening here, but let me hold it up to the camera. And again, just like when we did the inking on the folder, I like to go one direction, except sometimes on the flower of the leaves, but you don't want it looking all muddled and messed up, you know, and all swirly like that. You want it to be just really like a smooth stain or polish. Okay, can you see the sheen that's starting to come there? I don't know if you can. Whoops, I'm shaking. There. Okay, well, let's just turn it around and move down. Now watch this flower. Here it is now, just, it's watercolored, it looks pretty. But watch when we put this on it. Did you notice how little I'm using? Very little. A little goes a really, really long way. And you just want to get it evenly coated. And it makes, well, this is the pearl. They've got all kinds of colors. Bright colors, you know, all kinds of colors. I have, I like the pearl and I like the blush one that's pink. Um, okay, there you go. Can you see the, the gloss on it now? And it looks spectacular in person. It's just so pretty and so soft looking. It makes that watercolor just kind of look pearlized and you know nobody would know how easy that was they would think maybe you used pearlized paint but um i think that would be really hard to get the paint as even as this looks and there you have it and now 
I'm going to take my Swiffer and just kind of buff it. Just kind of buff it like that. To just kind of even out that shine and that gloss. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just cut this down, get out my trimmer again and decide where I want to cut it because I want to make it four inches wide by five and a half long. So let's see if I cut on this side of the, if I cut on this side of my flower on my purple flower, the four inch line would be right here so that looks pretty good so I'm gonna I'm gonna put it right there and cut that boy I think I need a new blade on my trimmer is what I think sometimes if you cut these upside down these embossing folders it works better so let me try that See, normally with this little gap right here that happened with my trimmer, I would be sincerely thinking about throwing this away. However, I think that my uh, sentiment will cover that, so I'm not going to worry about it. And so now I'm going to make this five and a half if it isn't already. It's exactly five and a half. Okay. So now we're going to put our sentiment on, our trimmed up sentiment. I'm just going to take off the remaining release paper. Come on. And then I'm going to decide where I want that happy birthday to be. I think I want it a little off center instead of just right smack dab in the middle. And I'm going to put it on there straight. It has the sticky on the back. So I'm just going to fold it around, just like that. And now I'm going to make my card background. I pre-cut some lavender metallic paper. Now on my other card that you already saw online, it has pink. I don't know if you can see that it's pink, but this one's a little bit different. It's lavender. And all I'm going to do is put some double-sided tape on the back of these strips. I didn't want to make the whole thing out of, the whole backing out of, um, back panel out of the metallic paper because I don't want to waste, you know, it won't show. Only the edges will show. So I just cut some, some edging off. like this. Put it on here, take the, the backing off. Put the edging right here on the edge, just like that. Stick it over a little bit. Out and take my scissors and cut off the excess. And I'm going to do the same with the other one. Super easy. Yeah, I, I just, this metallic paper, I love it, but, you know, you just kind of want to conserve it. You don't want to, if I had done the whole thing in the metallic, it would have, nobody would have seen it, and it would have wasted that much of the paper, so the cardstock. So I, I just like to conserve where I can. But 
put this down on the edge. Cut it off. And then I'm going to get my foam tape out to put the floral panel onto the card. And we're going to be almost done. Okay. Here's some foam tape. I'm going to put it on the back of this. The card panel. And get my smaller scissors. I know I say it every time, but these are the Tim Holtz non-stick serrated stick scissors. And they come in three sizes, and I use every size, and I love them. They don't stick to tape. They don't stick to anything. They're easy to use. You can get them on Amazon. The other supplies that I've used today have all been all to new, and they will all be linked down below if you're interested in any of them as well as the supplies that I used on my original card plus I'll put the links to the scissors and everything that come from um, from Amazon <clears throat> the gilding polish on there as well okay come on I always like putting a little edging on my cards. I don't do it with every card, but I like the way it kind of frames your floral element or whatever element you have in the middle of your card that's your focal point. I think it just kind of puts a nice little frame around it and it's and it works really well. Okay, get under there, little piece of paper. There we go. So I'm going to put this right here. Line it up equal on both sides. Just like that. Can you see that? You see the lavender? There we go. I think that looks pretty good. And you can see the color. Okay, the only thing that I'm going to do to finish this up is put a few pearls in there. On the other card, I did use pink pearls. This one I'm just going to kind of use cream colored pearls. I really like it on. Um, on things that kind of look elegant or soft. I like using pearls. I think it's a nice embellishment to use. And I'm just gonna put these around. Oh, turn over a little pearl. Here we go. There's one right there. I'm gonna put one down here by the sentiment. Maybe, let's see here. Maybe like there. And I like to make kind of a little triangle. So maybe I'll move this one to over here. And, you know, other people besides me have figured out that you should put an odd number of embellishments or whatever you're doing onto your, onto your, uh, cards because your eye catches odd numbers better than even numbers. Now, I have no idea if that's true, but I've heard it more than once, so I usually put three embellishments on my card. A little bit more glue on there. Just get this one on and we'll be done. And there you have it. You can see the, I hope you can see the gloss on it. There you go. Now you can. Just like the other one. And here's the original one that I did. Just like that. So I hope that this inspired you. I know several of you saw this card on Instagram or Facebook. And wondered how in the world I did it and trust me it's just not very difficult I wish that I could say it 
you know, with some fancy method, but it isn't. It's just something I decided to do and it worked. So I'm super happy about that. So I hope it inspires you. I hope you will try it. And if you do, please tag me so that I can know you did this method and how it worked well for you. And then figure out somebody who could use a very soft and feminine card and make something special. So thank you so much for joining me today. I so appreciate it. I really appreciate it. I have 70 something followers on YouTube already and that's unbelievable to me. But I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm just hoping we can meet up several times and, and learn together. So God bless you and I'll see you next time.